everybody, welcome to our Brandon MMA Roasted Podcast. We got... Oh, we're starting. <laughs> oh, we're starting. Smith. We're waiting for Eve Edwards to come in. Uh, we got a stack show. We got Al Iaquinta joining us, as well as the McCorkle Minute. We're bringing that back. Yes. You know, fans love that. And I love Sean McCorkle. Uh, I want to thank Speedweed. Listen, now is... The shop. If there's ever a time to uh, get marijuana delivered to you, it is right now, okay? Uh, they right will... Now. They will deliver it right to you. They got they got marijuana. They got edibles. They got CBD. All kind. They got THC sex lube. Just go to speedweed.com. Mm. Follow them at Speedweed. This guy Gino. He's he's really like one of the coolest people that I know, um, and one of the nicest people, most giving people too. A lot of people they they give because they want something back. Not this dude. He's just a, a good person. Uh, so we got Eve Edwards. Eve, I noticed you've been rocking the, the do-rag as of late, man. Is this like, uh, is this like quarantine Eve fashion? Uh, you don't wear it as much. Is he here? Oh, he's here now. What up, Eves? What's up, Vince? How you living? Show man. He's rolling me a blunt right now. <laughs> I feel you. Oh I'm wearing God. a do-rag, Adam, because I don't want, like, the quarantine got me in a, with a fro, and I don't necessarily, I literally, <laughs> like, my girl is the only person who sees my fro, and I was coming down here, I turned on the thing, and. I was like, oh shit, I don't have my do rag on because I just I just had a run and just got out of the shower. So I was like, let me line you up, son. Look at his hair. You can use the tails as a mask, bro. Just whoop it around. <laughs> I like it. I think it's I think it's cool. It's, it's just different, man. You always have a I, you never know what to expect with Eve Edwards. By the way, I uh, I didn't tell you last week. There was one fight I wanted to go over with you, uh, which I thought was uh, do you not hear me, Tyler? No, I can't hear. Vince is I, I was. I did that on purpose. I'm talking I'm to other people too. Like your there was one fight that I was like, your Berto fight was one of the coolest knockouts I've ever seen. I don't know if you uh, remember uh, Vince or um, Tyler. So Berto, Which fight was it? Uh, Edson Berto, uh, who was Andre Berto's brother. He was uh, the whole family. The father was like this, like kickboxing champion. They're like five kids. The early UFC too. They were real, they were super nice. It seemed like a real James nice. James Edison Berto, and he and he has a single leg on you, and you did a flying knee with your other knee that wasn't thing and just knocked him right out like that. Uh, oh, so he was holding on to a single and you came up with the other leg? Just yeah. Oh yeah, baby. That was cool. I mean, it was fun. Um, you play around with stuff like that in the gym all the time, and it's like when you get the opportunity to do it for real without any reservations. It's like shoot. And it worked out. So, cool. I mean, it's the end of the round, too. So, I was like, if if this doesn't work and he takes me down, he can't. Might as can't well. Yeah, might as well. I was going to ask, like, did you know. Go big or go home, right? Going yeah. for a single leg. Was that planned or no? Um, I mean, yeah. I was, I was trying to knock him out. I do it intentionally. You know, right. he's, he's all out of my leg. And, um, like, I was defending and then it was like well uh let's try it let's see how it goes it took a while i should have done it sooner but for a sec i i i had a conversation with myself i was debating it it was like you know i could do that knee that i always try in the gym but like he like i've never really hit anybody with it and he may take me down the round's almost over fuck it let's go well that's what i asked now now did you know did you watch tape on him and know that this is the kind of takedown that he tries to get so if he does that i'm gonna try the knee no, honestly, for him, the only thing I was focused on was defending heel hooks because he was one of those leg lock guys. Everything else I was comfortable with. I those was are the worst I, guys, too. I hate those guys. Those are the worst fucking dudes. It was like, it was one of those things where everything else in his game, I was like, it's, it's solid. His game is good. Um, I'm not impressed. I just, I just can't take him for granted. I can't take him lightly. So when the fight started, like, he kicks hard and fast. And that was cool. It was loud, but like, I blo- like. It doesn't matter how hurt. fast you kick. I, know I, I know what I know what you're about to do, so yeah, I'm blocking exactly. it. But it did sting the skin on my arms. I'm like, oh, that was fast. I don't like that, but I'm. <laughs> well, he I'm went, trying to actually play this on for my stream right now too, so they could watch you knock this dude out. But YouTube's being a little bitch. It went, I mean, he went right down. It was just like boom. It was so quick. And I was like, yeah, that was that was pretty sweet. That was that was actually really good. Speaking of heel hooks, did you guys watch the submission underground over the weekend? I did not. I didn't. I didn't. Oh my god! Wait, they're having tournaments still. Yeah, Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen. Chael by himself. Uh, it's just him grappling himself. No, he's just commenting. <laughs> he has the other guys like in trailers by themselves. They come out. They grapple. 
I don't, there's not even a referee, right? There's no referee. I don't think there's a ref in there. And then uh, they leave the building when they're done. It might be, maybe. And then it's over. And it's, uh, <laughs> that's it's, kind of cool. It was the only thing on. So everyone talked about this guy, the boogeyman. I don't know who the boogeyman is, but I guess in Jiu Jitsu, he's like the, the shit. Tyler, how good is this guy? Very good. I don't know who the boogeyman is. Richie Martinez or Gio Martinez. I forget which one's boogie and which one's. And Austin Vanderford oh. beat him. Uh, yeah. Paige Van Zandt's man beat the boogeyman, which is like a huge upset. Uh, in, in, in MMA fight? Richie Martinez. No, in, in grappling. In oh, grappling. for real? Oh. Yeah, uh, Ellenberger lost again, which sucked. And then uh, Vinny Magalish did. Uh, he was up against. Um, Greg Jones. Right? Greg, oh, Greg Jones. Jones. And then Greg Vinny Jones ripped his. Like, leg locks don't work. Leg locks don't work. So then the guy popped his, uh, popped his ankle within like five minutes. Uh, not even, like two minutes. <laughs> He heel hooked him. He had his heel facing the same direction as his knee. And then they and were Vinny talking. Wasn't happy. Right? Vinny was just sitting there holding it. Like and it was over. So that was it. It was disgusting. Vinny's one of those dudes, though. Like that, I, I, I guarantee, not guarantee, but I would easily believe that Vinny was still pretty safe. He's his legs, his ankles. Like it's not, weird. You could tell he was hurt. He got up and it was like huh? he didn't put any, any weight on okay. it. Okay. Okay. It was, I know he's it one of those, like, I'm trying to find a picture right now. It was so gross. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the fights coming up because there's gonna be there's gonna be three fights in ten days. Well, actually, first let's talk about the the rivalry right now between Darren Till and um, Darren Till's going at it with uh, what's his name with Mike. Uh, oh, you know what I'm talking about uh, the guy from Florida. Uh, Mike, 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 Mike Perry. Perry. Yeah. Perry. So on on Instagram. Uh, Platinum Perry Wright goes, weird how many guys like this picture. Even with all the ugly birds in Europe, you can't get them to like your pictures about Darren Till. <laughs> then Darren Till writes, weird how I could slam you on your fat head, strip you naked and violate you with an emoji, uh, and there wouldn't be anything that you could do about it, you fat bastard. Um, Jeez. Weren't they supposed to go to the spa? Weren't they supposed I, to go to those? Parties? I thought they were friends. They were like, there's like a video of them like being friendly to each other. So I mean, semi-friendly. Semi, yeah. Eve, have you ever talked about violating your opponent? Violating? Yeah. No. I just violate him. I just do it. Pull I just his pants do down it. and violating him. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> and and, and Vince, you don't talk shit, do you? Your opponents? I do when I'm in there fighting. Sometimes. What do you say? Yeah. Just little things like. Just ask them how they're feeling. If I could get them something, I just stupid shit like that. <laughs> like you need something, I'll just be hitting. You ever them. tell people they hit like a stupid bitch? shit like that? You told guys they hit like a bitch. Yeah, I told Andrew Kwan he hit like a bitch <laughs> when he broke my face. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you asked? That's, that's always when the comments come out too. You get tagged and you're like, "You ain't shit, bro." So I broke my face afterwards. I was like, he "Hit like a bitch." I was like, like "Your eyes broke my closed. shit." You're like. Hey, yeah. I, I mean, I had to give him credit. He broke my shit. <laughs> There's something about cutting weight that brings out the worst in people, at least for me, wrestling. When I used to lose like 15 pounds a week, when I got in that, that mat, I was so angry at my opponent for making me lose the weight that I wanted to kill him. And then he would, like, he would shoot at me, and I would clap. Like I would just fucking just, <laughs> I would applaud, be like, good job, or just be a fucking asshole. Is that what you're kind yeah. of doing this too? You're like, uh, can I get you something? Or... Is that what you're doing? <laughs> a total dick? No, when I'm cutting weight, I'm kind of, oh, well, I'm not really an ass when I'm cutting weight, I don't feel, but. No, typically now. I'm just like, fuck you, but food. I'm not a dick. You're like, you're <laughs> angry, but not at people. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not I'm angry. Fault. Yeah, I'm angry, but I'm not, I don't direct it towards other people, except for like my coaches sometimes because motherfuckers be eating my beef jerky and my snacks and shit. Like, that shit pisses me off. Then I'll talk shit to them, right? But. Typically, like, I don't really talk shit to people because I'm just, like, mad at my own little world. Like, I don't kind of, I don't put my anger on other people like that. People don't realize that when you cut, when you cut so much, when I was cutting so much weight, like, I would cut, like, 14 pounds a week, 15 pounds a week, and then I would drink, like, a water and gain six pounds back yeah. on like, a little water, which doesn't really make any sense because the water is 12 ounces, but in my body, it was six pounds. It was... <laughs> that doesn't, that math doesn't work out. Yeah, but that math doesn't work out. That doesn't work out, but I'm telling you, it would happen. I would gain. Your body is just grabbing. Water. What happened? Now, what happened was this motherfucker blacked out, went in the corner, and started fucking grabbing down on some shit. And then game yeah. two, when when he was like full again, was like, "What happened? You can't gain weight by a <laughs> no, no, what just happened? More weight than you consume. I've tried explaining that to people. Like, 
they think you can eat a Snickers bar and gain a pound. I'm like, that's not how it works, bro. You eat, you gain however much the weight of the Snickers is, but if all you're eating is Snickers, it's not going to come off as easily. So it's just going to yeah. sit there. Yeah, right? like you, like because like they're, they're playing that catch up game where you're going to eat a Snickers and then two days later they're going to be a fat piece of shit, a little fatter because they didn't do shit. They ate a Snickers, a bunch of other shit, and then right. it finally hit them, right? I'm telling they, you, I'm they blame it on the one sticker. Yeah, so they blame it on the one when it's fucking that whole day of dog shit. They were fucking stickers. eating and not doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love stickers. No, E, didn't you bring, <laughs> food, you bring food to your opponents on the way in? I brought food to the scale, yeah. This motherfucker eats on the scale. Yeah. yeah. yeah but you, and you also shared it? Who do, what uh, fight was that? A couple times. Um, Cody McKenzie. Stamps out. I shit. I offer to share sometimes. Some people, I'm like, I don't really know you or like you, so you can't have none of my shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Such a dick. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, let's talk about some of the fights coming up because obviously, you know, everyone's excited about Ferguson, Gaethje. Uh, yeah. By the way, is everyone excited? I'm, I'm kind of more excited about that than I am Khabib in uh, Ferguson, if I could be honest. <laughs> uh, Ferguson brought in uh, Benil Dariush. Uh, no, Gacy brought in Bill Darius to mimic Ferguson. Like, how do you bring in anybody to mimic Ferguson? How do you mimic Ferguson? It's like, you, what do you, you start doing cartwheels in the middle of the I round? I don't know. I guess the way you mimic him is just get a guy that's really wiry and just yeah. let him come in for a minute and then get someone else on you, let him come in for another minute. You know what I mean? Like, you got to keep that guy fresh because I've got yeah, there's no cardio that's going to put that out. There's no Tony. There's nobody that can, you know, emulate Tony Ferguson. There's only one Tony Ferguson. Yeah, that's a, I mean, he's he's kind of body, body style. Like it, he's just trying to get uh, like yeah, range and like comfortable with with the awkwardness of Tony Ferguson. But like, I mean, unless yes. Benito's just running around the cage and doing somersaults and fucking cartwheels and yeah, you gotta have like all kinds of pressure on body guy, a wrestler, and a break dancer, <laughs> all yeah, tall, yeah, and exactly. Lanky. I think the closest person would be probably like a Nate Diaz type guy, a guy who just put, goes in your face, constant pressure, yeah. like lots of punches in your face, shit like that. Not like, as that dynamic. Would be the closest, but... Not as athletically dynamic, though. He doesn't do yeah. a Not even close. Yeah, he doesn't. But I don't like like he, he would be the closest one that would put that kind of type. pressure on you, right? Like I don't know anyone that could really mimic him. Yeah, pressure like... and body type for sure, Nate. But then like you, you got to take like some of that Pettis athleticism yeah you, and, he has no uh, explosiveness he needs the explosiveness he needs like yeah. the wiriness like but also, he's like, a hard the dude KG craziness but that, that guy lando venato was pretty close to him yeah I, like uh they were looking in the mirror for that fight that was crazy that, that is that that's probably the the closest match but like like i don't know lando kind of fell off he's not like at that level you know yeah. um i'm sure he could mimic him but like then, then he's still not the same. It's it's weird. It's still not. I don't. I don't even know if he's as close to the same anymore. Did people yeah. bring in Dean Thomas to mimic you and just think that I was you? Because everyone, everybody, remember? Every, dude, I, I love his videos too. By the way. Oh, he's his so. Fucking funny. videos are so good with Mo. He's going out of gym now. He he like left American Top Team. Yeah, yeah. He's in, good for him though. Like good for him. Really. I mean, if he's successful in his own thing, like, I, I have nothing but happiness for him. You know Absolutely, I mean? man. I hope he is, you know. Um, and I think he will be. He's um, he's a really good coach, the way he breaks things down. Yes, he's a very smart, intelligent fighter as well. Dean Thomas, like, he's been around for too long, and he's put way too much time into this game, man. He, know, he knows this, like, the back of his hand. Yeah. And um, quietly, he's probably – him and Mike Brown, like, the most prolific, most – um pedigreed bets resume coaches probably out there yeah yeah he also Brown uh, is one of those guys that like you don't think about him ever when you're talking about like those great fighters or great coaches but he's both like it's like, hard to find that came it's out really of nowhere made his mark and got out became a coach and now has all these fighters that are that are becoming champs or at least top contenders and it's like oh shit that's mike brown like mike brown really yeah. be mike brown now, you were um you were coaching for a while. You were coaching uh, uh, you and Joe Schilling, right? Opened up your own gym, and you were coaching what's his name? The kid that beat. Well, we didn't open up a gym, but we were we were training at Joe's place, the yard. Um, so Joe has his gym, and then we were also working out a muscle farm up there in Burbank. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And for uh, Mickey, right? Yeah, yeah, we helped Mickey out a couple of times, um, a couple of fights. Um, Joe really put a lot of time into him. He's really helped Mickey striking. Um, 
I was I was in a transition in my life, so I didn't really get to put in as much time with Mickey as I would have liked to. But we did get some work together, <clears throat> and um, he was living with you, right? Yeah, we were roommates. So I had an extra room, and he was trying to move out to California. I'm like, yeah, you can pick that up. It's this much a month, you know. What was that like? You got to wash your own dishes. Um, <laughs> like, it it was cool, you know. Um, it just we're we're like it's we're so different. Like when we're on the mat, and we, we there were some things we watched together, but like he's from Jersey, he wants to watch Jersey Shore, and I'm like, I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> oh, he wanted to watch Jersey Shore, and he's from Jersey. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, watch? I love Jersey Shore, personally. I don't, it, I, I, it is a dumpster fire mess, and it's beautiful to watch. I watch that fucking trash TV, this guy. Yeah, dude, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I can't do that. I don't want. I don't do reality TV. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't do that either. I, I, I knew you were coming on the show, so I got my daughter. Hell yeah. <laughs> Eves, I got a question for you from uh, people on my stream. Honest. Come on. They want to know, what was this, the secretly, what was like the hardest, low-key hardest workout that you've ever had to like endure for like a fight? Like what was like the hardest things you've got to put yourself through? Um, I'm not going to lie, but like, I didn't like running. So running was the worst. <laughs> and um, I'm the same. one of my, one of my boys, Steve Brown, he's, he's a stunt man now. Um, but he wrestled at central Michigan and what we, he, we used to do these, these sprint workouts. And so one day we would do like a bunch of 400s, which were easy. And then some days we do like 800s, which were like, I don't know two of them. They were tougher, but not bad. But the the mile repeats, those were miserable. Yeah. I had to do I had to do four laps. I had to do it in like at first it was like five minutes. I'm like, no. Like yeah. I can't do that. If you no. want to run a five minute mile. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like the first mile, yeah, I'll get you a five minute mile. <laughs> so I got really close, but then like then so he made it six minutes. And um man, that was miserable. I, the first time I dry heaved. Dude, that's the fastest uh, I've ever run. The fastest I've ever run was a 5.59 mile. Wow. And I, I was dying. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so hard. That in the that's Marines? The worse. Yeah. Because you yeah. look out of shape as fuck in the Marines. Out of shape? Oh, dude, I was... He's out of the Marines. He's all fit, fucking shape, ripped, starts fighting. <laughs> I, got out of, I got out of boot camp. I was 183 on graduation day. Oh, wow. Two months later, I was 215. Okay, because the pictures I see with you with the mustache and you're all fat and like... <laughs> I got up to... He's not fat, he's happy. I got up to 230. All I was doing was lifting weights and eating and drinking. 230? Damn. Dude, okay, I drink was fat. every day. Every single day, I was drinking at least five, six beers. And then the weekends were even worse. Eating fucking chow hall food, which is like fried chicken and fucking bread mm. and all sorts of shit that's and what i'm talking about just lifting weights <laughs> that's it Dude, well, i got a fat story about one of my friends um i went back to att i went back to att and we're having this conversation and um there's like three of us standing around it's like me mike brown i think maybe woodley was there at the time and um this other dude this looks just like dustin i met dustin's brother so i'm like i'm talking to dustin's brother you know, and then we go over and we, I come back like a minute later and have this conversation and I'm staring at this dude and he's like, Eve, why are you staring at me like that? And I'm like, bro, you look so much like Dustin. And he's like, it's me. It's Dustin. His face is a little swollen. He looked bigger than me. I think, I don't remember who he had oh just fought. God. He'd fought like just a couple of weeks before that. And this was like, three or four days before he got the short notice offer to fight Cub. Oh, that's and he was nuts. huge. <laughs> he was huge. Like, I didn't he even pretty big. How big, do, how big does Dustin get? How big does he get? How big, how much over 200 does he, he really get? He doesn't get, like, he doesn't do that anymore. I think, I think, because he, he had the, he had that short notice fight. He took that Cub Swanson fight on short notice and um, that affected his performance, you know? Um, and so he was just like, ever since then, I've never seen him. Seen uh, him he's, yeah, he's probably like, fuck that after that, huh? Dude, the back, back then, he was he, he had like chubby cheeks and everything. He looked like a little <laughs> chip. Dude, we saw Max. We saw Max at uh, like fight week two years ago. He had to be 200 pounds. Max Holloway. Had to be 200 pounds. <laughs> Fucking thick boy, dude. And like, you're fighting at 45. Like, no wonder doctors say you're going to die every time you cut weight. Dude, you're cutting 60 pounds. Oh, that's probably the way he does it too. I'm sure he's not the yeah. Three weeks out. 
by the way, Vince, so the hardest practice I ever had, not to compare it to yours, Eve, but our, our wrestling team lost 64 to three, right? And we had a, we had, well, we had like a, we had, we had a coach that wasn't even like part of our school. He was like the janitor and he was an alcoholic. <laughs> So, so he was a part of our school. He's just a janitor. We don't even know if anyone hired him yet. Yeah, well, he, I don't know who's actually his Harley father, Day like, coaching the rest. Are you, Mister? Get away from me! His father was a coach. <laughs> yeah, he was like an alcoholic, but like he used to beat him up. It was just anyway. So all of a sudden, he starts posting pictures around the school, saying "64 to three, never again." So all day long, me and the team are like, "What the fuck's going on? This guy doesn't even go to our school. Like, why are there pictures, right?" So, doesn't even like, go here. So we get there. It's like we start off like a five mile run. Then we got to do sprints uphill with people on our backs for like an hour. Oh. Then we got to do those push-ups down, hold it, fucking 10 minutes later, up, like while someone's like holding your legs. Then we had to go to practice. We had a three-hour practice after that. It was just an hour and a half of live wrestling. Dude, kids were like yelling up. We were like, one kid's like, can I go to the bathroom? He's like, no. The kid just peed on the wrestling. Like, he just pissed himself. Like, that was fucking... <laughs> Because if you don't want to be here to leave, like half the kids left. Fucking, they were like, it was, <laughs> they're okay. It was like, there was like four kids left. But, and like, yeah, dude, it was that was brutal. But hey, we got we got better. Uh, Sean McCorkle slash Darth Vader. Uh, how are you? Yeah, is that you breathing like a fat kid right now that I hear? <laughs> it might breathe like Brandon, breathe like Brandon Schaub. Um, <laughs> And it begins. Yeah. You I have uh, logging out to logging on to Zoom. Look at what's going I, on. Well, you give me it gives me like thirty different numbers I can choose, and none of them in my area. So I was like, I don't know which one I'm supposed to pick, but none of those are even close. Dude, one of the funniest so, stories is like he comes on the show. He's like, I got to fight next week. I'm in the best shape of my life. Blah blah blah. I've been training camp. This is a, this is it. This is my comeback, right? Okay. Unfortunately, he lost. He he called <laughs> the next day. I'm like, what happened? He's like. Well, fighters like to lie. And uh, <laughs> he goes, I did six minutes on the treadmill as my, my preparation for this. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a back injury, so I was throwing out, a lot of, uh, throwing out a lot of misinformation out there to make it act like I was ready. I wasn't ready at all. Dude, you're a legend. All right, so uh, yes. the, minute, the, guy that, the guy that tapped out Mark Hunt in less than a minute, the guy that uh, started off his career, what, 15 and 0? Something like that. Fucking fucking up everybody uh, against a combined against against opponents with a combined record of 12 and 185 but whatever, nevertheless man. the guy that, the guy that <laughs> hey man wins a win bro the guy right that, that's why i take it I mean, is the, a win. He's the world's strongest man and a guy who's constantly fighting on facebook with everybody uh <laughs> if you want a good facebook people follow him on he does not give a fuck whether uh so take it away mccorkle it uh i'll tell you a funny one about that real quick before i start um so my mom is the most supportive person ever, like in the world, but I hate her seeing it in my social media, you know, um, because it's, uh, I don't know, I just, I'm still her little boy in her mind, you know. Um, you don't follow and, that uh, grandma rolling your social media, huh? Don't post her uh, yeah. you want to see? Yeah, no, well, she, she's dead. I actually smothered her with a pillow at the end of her cancer to end her suffering, so I handled that one myself. But, Good job, um, Good for you. But no, so uh, last night, uh, someone sent me uh, the, the Twitter link, retardedfaggot.com. And uh, they said, have you seen this? And I thought they were saying it was me. Like, like I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, uh, I thought they were insinuating that, that should be my website. Right. So I click on it, I click on it anyway, and I swear to God, it's just a, de a website dedicated to Brandon Schaub. So someone actually bought that domain oh. name and made it um, to him. So I, I, I said oh sometimes God. on – What's on the Twitter, domain, I, domain name? Uh, retardedfaggot.com. Jesus. So, <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not real. That's yeah. Brutal, so, dude. so – <laughs> So I, uh, so yeah, I put, uh, you guys still there? Yeah, yep. we, yeah, we just can't right. see you. People You're keep calling thing. me for some reason. Right. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I put that on Twitter. I said, sometimes the internet just gets it right. And within 10 seconds, my mom had retweeted it and liked it. So um, didn't really expect that from my mom, the lady that goes to church three times a week for 50 years. But I don't know. I thought that was funny. The apple doesn't fall far from the church. Got a supporter baby boy, dude. So. You should for sure. Um, right. You're the way you are for a reason. Um, Just think about right. that. No. <laughs> One of the best MMA personalities of all time. Just completely there. lost audio, if you can hear me. Please. I don't know if you can or not. Give it up for my man, Corkle. Oh, Wait, I thought we already did that part. This is working out perfectly, by the way. 
Uh, I know, but we have to give another intro because that, that. Okay. I can't hear you if you can hear me. I can't hear a word you guys are saying if you can hear me. We can, we hear, can hear you. We can hear we you. We can hear you. We can't. Can you read my lips? We, no, we can't can hear nothing. you. We can hear you. We can hear you. You? Can you hear us now? All right. Uh, all right. Hold on. I don't know what happened. This is working out great. We can hear you. Hold on. So, all right. I, I just texted you. I just texted you. We can hear you. He's on his phone. Alex. He won't get it. <laughs> okay. I can kind of hear you guys, I guess. All right. All right let's go. <coughs> I won't be able to hear you laugh, which will mean it'll be pretty much like last week. Uh, <laughs> exactly the same. All right. You ready for it? Since I messed things up again this week. Let's go. We are okay. ready. So I don't know if you guys saw what. So I don't know if you guys saw or not, but uh, Cowboy Cerrone um, said uh, this week in an interview that um, that uh, McGregor wasn't fighting the real you know cowboy. He was fighting Donald Cerrone. Uh, you know when they fought, he said it wasn't actually cowboy out there. He said uh, the whole time he was fighting, he felt like he just had a giant thumb up his ass. That's an actual quote from Cerrone. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but he said he felt like he had a giant thumb up his ass the whole time. And uh, immediately upon hearing that, Michael Bisping announced his return to the Octagon and wanted to call out uh, Conor McGregor. So he wants that to be his first fight once he heard it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pretend like you guys are laughing because I can't hear you. <laughs> so, oh, uh, let me see what else we got. Uh, did you guys see what Corey Anderson said? John Jones is a fake Christian? Yes. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's, it's hard because there's not a lot of news in MMA with no fights going on or anything. But, um, I saw that, uh, you know, Corey Anderson said, John Jones is a fake Christian. Walk around with your nose stuck in a Bible 24-7 doesn't mean you're going to heaven or something like that, you know. And I actually know John a little bit. I was able to train with him. And he asked me one time uh, what my favorite Bible verse was. And I told him, Jeremiah 29 11, you know, I've got tattooed on my arm. I don't have it memorized, but I have it tattooed on my arm. So um, I uh, told him my favorite Bible verse. And then I, I see John all week. He's walking around really literally with his nose in the Bible all week, you know. And so uh, I asked John, I said, hey, did you ever get a chance to look up that verse you asked me about? He said, oh, absolutely. I said, did you read it all? He said, I finished every single line. <laughs> and uh, that, uh, that was really cool. I thought they would do that. But then I saw that his uh, bookmark is a rolled up $100 bill. <laughs> so, I like, you know, it just felt a little odd. I thought I was contributing to some bad things. So um, on John Jones, uh, good luck with this last name. You guys know that Jan Blockovich, is that his name? Yes. Is somebody yeah. smoking weed on this? <laughs> I, knew there was a, I knew there was a reason he was laughing. So, um, John Black was saying in a tweet yesterday, <laughs> everyone's smoking but me. Um, he said in a tweet this week, John Blackledge said he can't wait to fist John Jones. That actually happened too. <laughs> Did you guys see that? He said, I can't wait to <laughs> no, fist him. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> oh, it happened. He said he can't wait to fist him. Oh, look at and, uh, Outstanding. I'm looking right John now. Jones thought that uh, was funny and said something back to him. And so a few days later, obviously, Jan was, you know, let in on the secret that uh, it's not exactly the right, you know, English to use for what he meant. <laughs> so he corrected his statement. Uh, he apologized for his poor grammar. And he said what he meant to say was he can't wait to suck his big, hot, juicy black cock. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that one. Also, uh, <laughs> I've been, I don't know if you can tell my house behind me is a mess, um, like my life. It's very symbolic. Um, but I've been moving this week uh, to a different house. I figure right when, a, like, right when a financial crisis hits, that's the best time to buy a house, right? Like, why not go ahead right. and just add to the uh, prices are lower, right? So I've been moving this week, and something has happened. I'm sure you guys have experienced it when you're moving. Um, you always feel like you forgot something at your old house. You know, like I've been back seven times, searched every corner, searched everything. Like, man, it feels like I forgot something. So it just was getting to me last night. I just kept thinking, man, like, uh, I know there's something there. I didn't know what it was. I was like, it has to be something. So I drove back one last time because I take possession tomorrow. I drove back one last time last night uh, to check it out. And sure enough, I did leave something there. It was Michael Bisping, and he was still in the closet. Oh, shit. So um, that was uh, – who went with uh, Shab on that? <laughs> uh, shout out to the homeless cats. If you guys don't know who the homeless cats are, you're missing out. Um, so – Hey. As I said, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare this week. Yeah, Adam kind of hit me up last Give it up for Tom McCormick, everybody. Tom McCormick. Oh, wait, I have a few more. Okay, two more. Go on. Oh, yeah, keep going. Just a couple oh, more. Oh, keep Sorry. going, then. Keep going. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, so what I wanted to do for you guys instead, I wanted to use uh, my favorite comedian, a couple of his jokes, you know, you probably haven't heard. Um, and these are going to be literally jokes for my favorite comedian, who's also an MMA fighter. Um, <laughs> so um, I figured I would steal some of his jokes. He's a far better comedian than I could ever dream of being. I wonder who this but is. These are jokes literally. Um, from Brendan Schaub's 
uh, You'd Be Surprised special on Showtime. These are actual word-for-word -word jokes. I type these out in transcripts on everything. I wrote the transcript out. So my brother and I traveled to Texas. We're doing a nationwide comedy tour. And we call an Uber from the airport. Jerry, the Uber driver, shows up. He opens the door, and I swear, Jerry looks like a sweet potato with eyes. That's his punchline. Jerry takes us to a gas station um, later on, and, um, or no, they get a rental car. Jerry drops off a rental car. My brother and I get stuck driving a Mini Cooper. And as we're driving, I notice we need gas. We pull over to the first gas station, and gas stations are a scene in Texas, man. You'd be amazed. There's, it's where all the good old boys have their trucks out, shiny, washed up. They're hanging out with their kids and their half-full swimming pools. True. So we pull up a Mini Cooper, and everyone's staring at us. So as my, I told my brother, listen, just go in and get us some snacks. As he walked away to get them, I said, oh, and don't forget to get me a Slurpee. That was his punchline. <laughs> um, <laughs> my jokes are seeming phenomenal now, aren't they? <laughs> so, uh, last one I wrote down for you guys. Um, who's seen this new Michael Jackson special, Leaving Neverland? Has anyone seen this? <laughs> what the fuck? That was his punchline. So, <laughs> that's that's all I have. If you haven't seen it, you'd be surprised. You, you really will be surprised. You should watch that immediately. It's I have not you seen guys it. watched it? No. no. Not good. All right. You, well, you got, you got, you got, it's the best thing I've ever seen. Good. It works way <laughs> Corkle, that was awesome. Sean McCork, everybody. Thank That's you. That's fucked up. That's Sean, fucked up. You're awesome. Take care, brother. You're the best. See you, man. Have fun. Later, Sean. <laughs> oh, my God. That was Sean McCorkle. Oh, my God. You know what? He's not, he's not wrong, though. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, openly blast Brendan Shaw, but, like, that, spe he's got to work. He's got to work. I've seen it. And, That's you know, all I'll say. A certain, the, Certain comics I watch and they really inspire me. Uh, and then Have like, you watch his stuff? No, because I, I just uh, you know. I think Brandon Schaub is the funniest when he's not trying to be funny. Exactly. And that's the pro like when he's just if being you normal. Watch he's it, funny you'd be like, me. okay, there's material there that but you even that write often. jokes about. You just wrote the wrong jokes about. Right. Like yeah. you tried to be funny where it's just funny in itself and just tell the story. You yeah. know, like I can't believe that uh Cerrone said he felt like he had a thumb up his ass the whole fight. That was <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> That's a weird. <coughs> have, have you ever had is that like? A, is that a, a nervous feeling people get that, that that there's a thumb up their ass? Have you ever had a thumb up your ass in a fight? Um, before a fight, yeah, but it was when I went to the doctor and he gave me a prostate exam. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's always awkward. And I hated I mean, that. Had, I think we've probably all had the "I need to shit right now" feeling uh, yeah. before whatever. You've never had that, Eve? No, I I make sure. I he mean, blows no. his nose. He <laughs> blows the nose. I do. I, 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 make sure I, take <laughs> shit. I make sure I take a shit before I leave for the arena. But here's the thing. Like, literally, before I walk out, I have to piss first because, like, I used to yeah. play basketball as a kid. I do that. Basketball as a kid in the Bahamas. And one practice, this um, one of our forwards went up for a rebound, and he got clipped from underneath. He came down on his head. And he got knocked out. It was the first time I ever seen somebody knocked out. I was probably like 13, 14 years old. And um, he pissed himself. Yeah. So, oh. like, whenever whenever I got into a fight, I was always uh, like, I don't want to get knocked out and out. then piss yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, fortunately, oh, I've been knocked out twice, only once unconscious. And, like, I didn't piss myself. So, it's all well, that one girl, There you go. That one girl, Justine Kish, who took a dump in the octagon. She was trying to fight a rear naked choke. She yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she she came a, there's a rule because of that now. She made it because of her. There's a law. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you do this. You're fine now. You, you, you find disqualified if you shit or piss in the octagon now. Yeah. Wow. But she came to my show and I was giving her a hard time. I was like, listen, don't worry. You know, uh, I've seen you have bad nights too. Or like I was just, you know, on stage. <laughs> I was like, well, if this goes really bad, I'll just shit on the octagon. You should have been, you yeah. been like, it's, all, it's fine. We've all done anal. <laughs> is it a rule? Is it, is it a rule in the pros <laughs> if it makes it? <laughs> Is it a rule <laughs> if you make someone throw up that it's automatic loss? Or no? Because I know in Amy's, like, if you body shot someone and they throw up, fight's over. Wow. No, if it's a yeah, rule, I don't, I don't know of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that either. You guys should put, like, uh, shitting medicine in your opponent's thing. You know, it was <laughs> bad. Like, 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 switch the water or something. I haven't really seen anyone get hurt too bad from body shot that wasn't a liver shot, though, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I or haven't either. Kidney. 
I've seen people get hurt with kidney shots, but like even a kidney shot will like hurt you, but you're still able to function. You're not. It's not that crunch over. You yeah. can't. Move your Getting leg. hit in the liver is different. Like no, you, that's... like you hurt all over. Like you hurt in your I think joints. That's the worst like... feeling I've ever had. Yeah. Like a hard body kick, like yeah. liver body kick, yeah. and you just crumble. Dude, I'd rather get my knocked first out. liver shot. The first time I got hit in the fucking liver was by Jeremy Jackson, dude. By Jeremy Jackson sparring as an amateur at Big John McCarthy's, and I had no idea what had happened to me, dude. No <laughs> fucking clue. We were sparring, and I was doing pretty good, right? And I was like, "Fuck, man! Like, I'm feeling pretty good." Jeremy Jackson, like, I don't know if you guys know who Jeremy Jackson is, but yeah, he's a I very good boxer. He's an, yeah, you just fought him. He's a he's a good MMA fighter. I think he beat Nick. Didn't he? No, him? no, I didn't fight him. I fought Jeremy Williams. My bad. Oh, was it Williams? Oh yeah, Williams. That's right. So, Jeremy Jackson. He has a kickoff the ultimate fighter for going to see get pussy. Yes, yeah, he's, yep. yes, that's him. Remember, he's man. a very good boss. He's a good fighter. Very underrated. Made yeah. some fucking yeah. He made some mayhem Miller mistakes, and now he's in prison. Yeah, but uh. But I was sparring with him, and he fucking liver shot me. And, like, he hit me, and I was like, oh. And I, like, went to I like went to fight back, right? I went to, like, just immediately fight back. And I was just like, oh, on the fucking floor, bro. Just, like, in a ball. Like, oh, what's wrong with me? And, like, Big John's just laughing, right? And I'm like, fuck you. And he's like, fuck <laughs> up and breathe and do this and that. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, I was just so mad, right? I'm hurting, and Jeremy's, like, laughing. And I'm like, oh, did you do to me? Oh, man. It was like, it was bad. It was bad, dude. Like, I've never felt pain like that ever. Wow. The first time I took a body shot, like a serious liver shot, I was um, training with a boxer, but I was able to take him down. And uh, he ripped me with a nice left hook to the body. And my instincts right then was like, change the game. And I just shot a double right off of the bat, put him on his back. And then my coach is like, all right, break, get up. And I was like, I can't move. Yeah. <laughs> Like I did it. Seize, coach. <laughs> my wife and I were hooking up last night. Tried to put her finger up my butt. Like, <laughs> you just pinch and twist it. You're like. Ksh. I was like, no, this is like a, a fucking gateway drug. I'm not. I'm not doing. Oh, oh you're a push back or how you push back into it? Yeah, I'm like, no way. Bird cry shooter. You're like, yeah. <laughs> really? Did you ever let your girls get a finger up your butt or no? Or no, Vince? I don't mind a finger or tongue as long as oh, it's not too it. deep, right? I'll uh, take all day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. All day. I'm like easy E. The shit says exit only. <laughs> yeah, well. Sure, but like, have you ever taken a really good hey, shit? But, like, hey, but when uh, easy E was fucked up on that, that eight ball, that 40, you got guarantee you had some shit up his ass. You think so? His pretty little ass. His pretty little Jericho ass I for sure you did. Easy E was like one of my favorite rappers. My he, too, died of, he died of AIDS. But he had he was like, such an awesome dude. Like, he was like a really nice dude that people didn't even realize. He was a gangster. Like nine different women, and he had like two kids on the way, <laughs> but none of them had AIDS. None of the women he was with, none of his kids had AIDS. Like so, how? Uh, he- I mean, yeah, it's very slim to none, but it's possible. Like it's not like, and he could have contracted just like it anything. afterwards, right? He could have contracted you know, automatically, just like oh, you came in contact with it, you got it. That's no, not, but he had sex with you know. and, and and they had they got pregnant. And he had AIDS. Uh, isn't that a, a? There's still a chance that they don't get it, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still a disease that yeah. you, can, you know, like some people can fight out. There's a chance. It's weird that all nine of them didn't get it. That's very <laughs> weird. <laughs> but yeah, but you know what it could have been? Because what it could have been what the HIV, right? Because the HIV is not dangerous to us, but AIDS is. Or I don't. I'm not sure how it works, but I know they're both it, dangerous. They're yeah, both bad. They're both highly contagious. <laughs> it's not like a. That's why I think with like coronavirus, because people are like, it's not as dangerous as they say it is. It is. I think they should give coronavirus to Magic Johnson. Right? So they're coughing. And, and see how and see how Magic does. And and if Magic doesn't survive, it's, it's really bad. Well, I don't know. Does Magic have the have the money to survive Corona like he did to survive AIDS back then? Because yeah. that's how he survived AIDS was the money he had. Yeah. That was one of the funniest Chris Rock jokes I've ever heard. He never did it, <laughs> never did it live. He goes, Magic. I saw him do it at Caroline's. He goes, Magic Johnson. What kind of AIDS he got? He gained weight. They gave him a talk show. He well, goes, would you, that wasn't two a chance for women. That was a side effect of AIDS. Hold on, I'm getting fa- <laughs> I'm getting facts right now from my chat. They said it's a 0.2 chance for women to contract it during sex. Is that true? Two percent. Is that true? From male to female. Yeah, I think he also he also could have got it from drugs too, not sex. Oh, 98 percent. Wait, hold on. Not you gotta write this in English now, you fucker. I know you're All I'm saying, there's, Norway, a very, but... there's a high chance that you get it, but there's also, like, there's a chance you don't get it, so. Yeah, which is like, fuck, you're lucky as shit. But nine times in a row, that's kind of odd. Yeah, that's the weird part. Um, maybe he, maybe he got it afterwards, and maybe he got, like, 
Like, maybe maybe he today hit with like a blunt force of it. You know what I mean? Afterwards yeah. or something. Or like when really was the last intense? time? When was the last knows? time any of you guys had a um, blood test for like STDs? Last year. Uh, I mean, I did a fight. Yeah, physical, last summer. So last summer's had, last time you know, I had one. Test for all that shit. It's been a while. For a fight. I used to get yeah. HIV tests all the time. I used to go to the gay men's health clinic because they had free. It was twenty four hours. The gay men's health clinic had free AIDS testing. Uh, oh yeah, dude! In Hollywood, the like the WeHo one. Yeah, I got tested. I got tested after a fight because I got MRIs done, and the doctor I went to, I go there often, and then they were like, "Oh, you want to do this?" And I said, "Fuck it, let's do it," because I wanted to get like STD tests and and that kind of shit too. So I I just did it all, and that was last summer. Like, oh, no, it was after summer. It was like October, September, October. Like Wait, August, oh, September, oh, August, I September. I had a Parenthood credit card. I had like, <laughs> I had they have those? Fucking like, it was like one of those Subway punk cards. At, like, oh my nine, God. Fucking, it's crazy. It's a sham, man. What, one free abortion after a thousand? Free? Fuck that. All right, so what are we talking about here, people? Oh, hey. by the way, are you guys watching um, that ESPN documentary on the Bulls? Yes, on the Bulls, oh, on to. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, the Bulls? Yeah, I heard that's really good. It's, it's, I think... I feel like everyone's like I feel like everyone's neglecting Michael Jordan because of like LeBron James and Kobe and all these guys now. Michael Jordan's the fucking OG man. Hey. Michael Jordan is the fucking guy. Dude, like, when movie. you think about basketball and fucking dominating in basketball, Michael Jordan is the fucking only guy. You should, like really, dude. Like, well, also how they could play the game back then. Yeah, that's what makes it. It's like he was doing all that with people trying to fucking beat the shit out of him. Yes, and he's not like, a big dude. He's not him. a big dude. Don't touch him. Oh, we Michael got Jordan is not a big dude either. He is a small dude. motherfucker for a basketball player and the shit he did. Yeah. Like Dennis Rodman was the funniest. So, oh, yeah, like, I love Rodman he's too. Such a G. So, Scottie Pippen basically sits out. Pippen, Rodman, and, and uh, fucking Jordan, when those three were like all yeah, there, so dude, that was like a dream. Six team. months, right? Because the contract, he's like the 15th, like, he signs the worst contract ever. He's like the 150th biggest salary in the league, but he's like the number two player in the league. It's fucking crazy, right? So he sits out, and uh, Rodman is like the man. It's Rodman and Jordan, and Rodman's really doing well. And then the Pippen comes back, and Rodman. Fuck feels yeah! Like, no one got the ball over Rodman, dude. So Rodman asked Phil Jackson. He's like, "I need a vacation. It half the season." And they're like, "No." He's like, "No, I got to." Go. <laughs> they give him. They're like, "All right, we'll give you forty-eight hours." Forty-eight hours. <laughs> he go. He fucking goes to Vegas, right? <laughs> Lands in a uh, lands gets a motorcycle police escort. He's drinking on the way to the motorcycle and just What's takes off no helmet. Team? Then he's gone for like a week, for like a week and a half. They can't find him, right? So Michael Jordan comes to Vegas with Phil Jackson to get Rodman out of bed, right? Because he's he with like a bunch of hookers, like Carmen Electra too. Is that how he started hooking Carmen? Carmen was hiding underneath her blanket when Jordan comes in, right? Like, she doesn't... <laughs> Rodman is the fucking, my, my fucking spirit animal. So bro. then he comes to practice, right? And they're like, we got to get Rodman back in shape. So they're doing indie oh, groups, you know, like everyone runs the group and someone sprints. So Jordan's like, fuck it, let's just go real slow because this is bullshit. Rodman's the one out of shape. Rodman fucking takes off and makes him chase him like, in better shape than all of them after, <laughs> a, after like oh, 10 days in Vegas. I'll be all coked up from the night before too still. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> Lip-flops, like, sweats, and practice. I'm, I'm crying last <laughs> Like, is I mean, can you imagine, like, in the middle of the you, – you won five years in a row. You're the NBA champions, and Jordan has to go to a hotel to get you out of bed. Like – Dude, that – but – He's like the OG now, bad boy. Now, that's a normal thing. A vacate – these motherfuckers take three days off every fucking ten games. Yeah. Like, that's how they do it now because they – under like – Robin, Those guys take days like, off when they bro, work, man. I, see I need a game off. Out. Fuck you guys. Like, give me <laughs> one game off. It's not like a fight where we get to fight every three months if you're really lucky. Four months, probably six months. All like, right, well, let's talk about the Well, fight. yeah, but we fight every day, to be honest. In the, in well, the yes, gym, true. our training is, is worse than a is, But they're also like doing practice. They don't train, they don't train and like they games. play. So, Eve, who wins? Uh, so who but there's down? 160 games, bro. So, it's like, it's half the year. All right, back to MMA. Anyways, back Eve. to MMA. Eve, who wins? So who do Dominic Cruz? Man, I haven't broken it down yet, but um, I, I, I want I want Cruz to win. Um, I'm I'm not the same way I feel. Yeah, I'm. It's not like I I dislike Cejudo or anything like that, but I, I I really I like what Dom has done over the strength of his career. I like what he's doing now. Um, <clears throat> a guy like Dom who. When, when, you, when you go out because of injury and you stay out for so long because of injury, you come back against the best in the world, um, beat them, 
I mean, I, I think Dom is like quintessentially one of the best um, bantamweights ever. Um, I, I want to see him get that title back. I'd love to see that. That would be like a great redemption story. Cejudo's yeah, his resume, like, you know, his wrestling is solid. You saw him make those improvements against DJ, um, came back and looked like a better fighter, like he improved. But um, I don't know. I feel like DJ may have been his bar. And, you know, yeah, he, he won the fight against TJ. But, like, TJ had to cut that weight. I'm not, I'm not knocking him. I'm not saying it doesn't – it didn't – I'm not saying that Cejudo would have won regardless. But um, I'm not it played saying – played in his favor. Him. That fight played in Cejudo's favor, though. Yeah, definitely played into his favor. But I just I – just, I really want to see Dom win that uh, one. Too. It's hard for me to, to – Should this fight be happening, though? Or should have Aljamain Sterling have gotten the shot? That's a good argument. I think Aljamain, I think he deserves a title shot. I don't know why he's being overlooked, you know. Um, Marlon Marais is the last guy to beat him, and he's, he's <laughs> ran through everybody since then. And, um, like, he, des- he deserves his shot, absolutely yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. I- I'm sure that has something to do with the UFC not really having a whole lot of love for him, you know. Um, yeah, for some reason. And I, like, yeah, I, I would love to see Aljamain get his shot, man. Uh, yeah, he came and uh, helped coach my wrestling team. So did Vince, by the way. And Vince didn't know one move. Better off telling And I was like, I can't. I knew one move. I know one double leg. And it's a pretty good double leg if I do say something. Middle school kids were taking Vince down. And I'm like, how is this guy? I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Vince is a fucking <laughs> amazing. Uh, but they take me down all the time. But I love it. But they take me down. I do. I suck at wrestling. I'm not. I'm not I do, do not suck at wrestling. Don't, but it's, it is weird to go with kids, though, sometimes because you want to <laughs> Up, but you don't want to fuck them up at the same time you can't let them just ragdoll you it's hard going I, like i let them i let them win as i fuck them up in the process is how bro, I do it. like yeah. this this is a, this is a real thing that happened i was with my boy dan valamont who was like he took second in the national tournament for penn state but um he took me up to lehigh and it was the summer and they had these kids in there i was probably like 34 this 16 year old dude beat the shit out of me like, <laughs> just straight wrestling like there was nothing I could do, and I was—I yeah. just felt like, like I felt like a child, and there was a child beating me up. And he—it wasn't like he was bigger; he was probably a weight class below me, also. But you were number one in the world, and you in the UFC. <laughs> it was miserable. Adam, man. Adam, remember when I was fighting when because I was training for Gregor, though, and you were asking me who I was wrestling with, and I told you these high school college kids? Yeah. I was wrestling with those same kind of college kids that fuck me up wrestling, bro. Like I get fucked up wrestling. And that's why I was yeah. like, he, like in the fight, that's what I was telling you, like in the fight, Gregor's a wrestler, he's going to take me down. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a wrestler. I'm not going to say he's not going to take me down, right? No matter how much I practice, how good I against against other people, like you're going to eventually get taken down. There's too many variables. There's too many. But what I did tell you was I was going to get fucked back up, right? Which I did right. do and I will do every time. But like, dude, there's people that are just good at things. And like, it doesn't matter your age or size, whatever. But there's kids yeah. that are fucking 60, 17 that will fuck you up wrestling. And it's ridiculous. No, I used to watch, I used to watch Naruto. And there was, uh, was a st- I know this is silly, but there was a statement one of the, one of the trainers in that show made. He was like, there are some, there are some children who are better than, than masters. There's just like this. And that's a real thing. Even in fighting, yeah. there's some, some, some young guys in the fight sport now who like, we have, I have a whole lot of experience over them and all these other things. And but it's there's just, just technically, something. yeah, they did. He just have something special. It's like John Jones. Yeah. John Jones is that guy. And he, yeah. you know, in the sport right now, Khabib is kind of that guy, but he has, he has this one thing that he's really mastered. Yeah. I have a question, right? So I've taken this like really, that's actually a really cool app. It's called Fight Camp. My friend Shaney Rush, I don't even know Shaney. She's one of the teachers. And it's an app where like, uh, they t- it's like, three or four different boxing working uh, boxing per week. They put up like 45 minute, uh, like 10 rounds. And then in between the rounds, you're doing squats and push ups and this and that. But they're teaching some pretty decent combos, right? But some of them are like, are like 10 punch combos of like left, right, hook, step back, left, uppercut, this, come back with the right, right? And which is awesome, you know, for your mind and stuff. But whenever I, I spar, I just do one twos and barely land those. Like, I, I've never landed a, like a four punch combo. Like, have you ever landed a, an eight punch combo in a fight that you did in practice, Eve? Um, when combinations start to get past three punches, yeah, like it's just instinct, you know. Um, watch, watch, watch my fight with Aaron Riley, the second one. There's a point where I have him up against the fence. My WC fight against Deshaun Jackson too. Um, there's a point when I just let loose, you know, and it's not, it's not about 
like a combination that you drilled or like you've drilled all these different combinations a million different times. Cause this is what I say about mixed martial arts. And especially when you're throwing punches, it's the same. These are just puzzle pieces that can go anywhere. It doesn't have to be one, two, three jab, cross hook, you know, it could be cross hook uppercut. And, and, and when one leads to the next and you can always, I'm sorry, one leads to an option for the next move being a jab or a lead uppercut or a lead hook, you so know, you're always in the moment. Yeah. You're never basically like I'm gonna show, I'm gonna do the six point combination and see if it works. It's always in the moment, no matter what he does. It's usually just like if it's a counter, it's like I know I'm gonna counter with this and continue. But everything from the continue is instinct. You know, I know I'm gonna start with this. Yeah, comfortability too. Like if if you notice in fights, a lot of guys at first are tentative, they're tense, they're they're it's a feeling out process, right? But then as they get loose and whatever, then they'll start throwing the combos to do it. So a lot of that, that's a big factor in it too, is like, is comfortability, right? Like you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to go out on the first time, right, Adam? You're not going to practice your jokes for the first time, never in front of people and they go out on the hugest yeah. fucking stage of your life and do it, right? You're going to, you, you need, you need to be comfortable first. So you're going to, you're going to build up. So. Like Vince, your one fight, it was like th three <laughs> fights ago. You fought, the, I think it was the Russian, but you threw like, you were throwing so many hooks and he was throwing like hundreds of hooks at each other. It was just basically that, that, that the one where you gave me the shout out. I forgot where it was. Oh, no, it was a Brazilian kid, I think. It was a Brazilian dude. But you were just, like, winging. It was basically, right, or, or those mostly combinations. It seemed like you were you guys just throwing. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was honestly just comfortability because, like, we were both tentative, right, and I wasn't doing that at first. But then after a while, I was like, he's not going to come in on me, and I'm like, like, I just started being like, fuck it, right? And I just started throwing, and then after a while, I started getting comfortable, so I started throwing more and more and more, right? And I was getting hit, but I was comfortable, so I was like, fuck it. But that was like, that was like, because I wasn't comfortable, right? And I thought that guy was going to be comfortable slugging with me. So I was actually wanting to slug with that guy. I was like preparing a slug fest for that dude, but it turned out being like a. Well, cool. normally, like normally you hit people and they go down. Uh, yeah. That dude didn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just, yeah, I crossed that dude's eyes a bunch of times, but you know what too? Like if you watch that guy, like, I don't know. I don't like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm fucking boasting myself up too big, but he adjusted a lot for me in that fight. Like, if you watch him before his fights, he sat there and slugged with people. And that's why I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to get to slug with someone finally. Someone's going to sit there and stand. But then once I hit him, he was like, so he didn't want to get hit again. And, like, I hit him a few times pretty good and I crossed him. But then he would hit me and then he wouldn't come rush me, right? So in the first round, he actually fucking hit me pretty good in the liver and knocked the wind out of me good. Like, I was hurt. And I dropped my hands and I blow out like a big gust of air. And I'm like, like, just kind of preparing him to come in and just fucking try to finish me, right? Because... At that point, he had that opportunity to because I was hurt. I couldn't really defend myself that well, but he didn't know that. I was trying to game it. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It was just a game. Eyes. That means you hit them so much they're wobbly. The eyes <clears throat> yeah, like, you hit, like, yeah, I've, like, I hit people a lot and I see their eyes cross. Like, you hit people and you, you could tell they're rocked, right? Like, yeah. Eve, how many times you hit someone and you're like, you could tell they're not looking. Like, they don't know what they're looking at, right? Like, you hit someone and you rock them, you, could, you look in their eyes and they don't well, know. Well, they go to that, like, that thousand yard stare for a second where they're looking at you, but then <clears throat> it just becomes like, empty yeah and then they and then they come you like know when someone like, zones oh, out shit. you know when someone zones out when they're awake yeah. but they're zoning out yeah. you'll see yeah, that when they start to like come this. too but at first you hate people you actually see people's fucking eyes cross like oh, yeah, you, you, see, you, you see hate people right away not track you properly for a split yeah second. you'll yeah. see their eyes straight like cross. their heads following but there's something missing like yep. yeah it's like weird. they'll go wonky for a second and like <laughs> when i hit i hit that dude like four times five times good like that in that fight and he just ate it and that's why when was the moment when you had to fake it you know, when what when he hit me? Yeah, when not not and it may not have been that fight, but you you remember the one of the moments where where you got caught and it's like, ooh, that shit stunned me. But like, I know I'm gonna fight, so I got to make sure he doesn't see it. Yeah, actually, yeah, um, that's happened a few times. Uh, one time was actually with Damian Brown. Damian Brown, when I came back in New Zealand, yeah. he rocked he rocked me and he hit me. He clipped me like in the back of the head. He came at me with like an overhook or something. And I went to I went to just uh, who's the boxer that does that? Um, can't think of his name right now. Uh, Holmes, Larry Holmes, right? I, I take a I, like I take a lot of boxing stuff because my coach Petey gives me boxing stuff. So I was trying to Larry Holmes it, and he snuck around and he clipped me in the back of the head, and he rocked me, and I was like shit, and I couldn't really see him for a second. But I don't know if he could tell or not because I wasn't trying to look at him, so he could see my eyes. He rushed I, in on you though. Yeah, he did, but I wasn't looking, so he couldn't see my eyes, and I was just kind of like, you know what I mean? Like I, I threw a fake to get him to to kind of. Oh fuck! I can't rush. You know, I, I went busted in a girl's eye, and it's then a scary she, thing, she dude. <laughs> like a week. Uh, I'm not kidding, and uh, I, I felt bad, but I was also kind of proud. 
Hold on, hold on, honest, hold on, dude. hold on. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. And he said he busted her eye and she got pink eye. Like, didn't she get pink eye from poop? So where, where, yeah. where, where, where were you coming from, Adam? That was a doo doo. Uh, that was a doo doo. Uh, uh, I pooped the fifth. Actually, uh, that was it. Was a rough. It was the night before I got I got locked up. And it, it was at, no, no. He, he pulled it. It was it was. Uh, you know what it was? It was ass to eye, bro. It was A to E. Yep. Straight ass to eye. Straight ass to eye, bro. Yes. Ass uh, eyes. Uh, and Ganu versus Rosenstruck. Uh, <laughs> Ngannou. Yeah, I think Ngannou has more tools now, especially after, after that Stipe and and Derek um, Brown and fucking yeah. Derek Lewis fight. Yeah. He, um, I think he he he's really added a bunch of things to his game since then. He's not that one dimensional big puncher anymore. He's yeah. way more mature as a fighter just from that little bit of experience. Uh, Calvin Qatar versus Jeremy Stevens, a guy that you knocked out. <sighs> First person to ever finish Jeremy Stevens right here. <laughs> right here. And now he's Steven, a Stevens is um, Steven still has that power. That's what they say is the last thing to go, right? Yeah. Um, and he's he's improved his game too a lot since then. He, he credited me. I appreciate that too. He credited me with with making him change some things. But um, and Qatar, Qatar is tough, man. I think and Qatar's on the way up. A, and he's yeah. a good tech. He's a good technician too. Yeah. See, and Stevens is like Stevens is kind of in his place. He's one of the best in the world, but his room for improve. He's close to his ceiling. I feel like. I like. I think the <clears throat> the fact that Jeremy Stevens throws everything into every punch, Calvin is gonna have him by right. as much on everything. Yeah. They're gonna fight the same, and it's just gonna be like clean, solid, plink, 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 versus the like, big wing in. It could fights that you don't expect them to win, or like these kind of fights. But then he seems to lose sometimes when he steps up a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say right now. Jeremy is like that, and he's. And he's He's kind of predictable oh. in that manner in the way that he fights, but he also has this he also has this this thing about him where him coming at people like that, especially technicians or anyone who, who doesn't really know how to deal with it or is not used to it, will crumble, right? Like he's he's broken down very good technicians with with the way he comes at people. Have you ever so played with him? Could, but, but that. Calvin those, those also bangs, dude. You can't handle pressure. You know what I mean? That's um, true. Dude, Calvin <laughs> sits in the pocket and will just throw. Like, so I don't think he's going to be, like, backing up and trying to try this stuff. It's just going to be like, all right, well, I'm hey, here. Stevens, have you trained with uh, Stevens in uh, San Diego? Yeah, I have. I have. Stevens actually does hit pretty hard. Um, I've been, like, the person who, the smallest dude I've been hit that hits the hardest to me is still Sam Cecilia to this day. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. Sam Cecilia hits, like, like a fucking middleweight, dude. Like, he's helped me. He, like, Sam is the only dude that's smaller than me that's hit me and made me, like, spin. Like, he's the only one that's making me, like, Actually, like torque my body spin. Oh, was it also because you weren't expecting him to hit that hard? Um, maybe, and he threw like a really meaty hook at me, like a like a really hard right hook. But he always he throws hard like that. And when we spar, like like we were kind of like you know what I mean. We phone book fight a lot, and it was like back it was back in the day in the Ultimate Fighter. So like we were kind of we were we were like just two Rams heading on each other. You know what I mean? So I was kind of expecting. I want to say, but he hit really fucking hard. We were waiting for Ally Quinta, by the way. I guess he's still ducking you. I don't know where he is. <laughs> I, I talked to him yesterday. He was he was he gets drunk every day at like five in the afternoon. Uh, Does he? Uh, yeah. That was a house. Just sips on his wine like a fucking housewife and shit. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Jorgen <laughs> uh, Jorgen De Castro taking on Greg Hardy. Uh, I don't know this Jorgen guy. Well, oh, by the way, Eve. So PFL. Um, the whole year is done, which sucks for me because I had a job with them. You had a great job with them. You were there. Are they taking care of you guys, or, or what's going on? I was an independent contractor for PFL. I don't even know if um, I don't I don't know what's you don't going even on. Know. With that. Damn. Oh now, damn! You're also, innocent. I heard they're getting rid of half their roster or something, or six percent of their roster, which also sucks. I mean, the PFL yeah. is honestly like amazing people to work for, and I think they have the right idea. It doesn't matter how many Twitter followers you have. It doesn't matter if you're some fucking you're from you know Uzbekistan and you have. Nobody knows you. If you win, you get a million dollars. And that, it's, it's the most pure. You know. um, the thing that I, they have to work on, I think, is the rounds because the, those, two, those, two minute, those two rounds and whoever wins the first one wins the fight, that gets a little strange, you know, because you can't have more than five rounds in one night in certain places. So, yeah, but that, that, so that changed in the second season um, where it was if you, what was it? I think the judges, it's kind of the pride rule. The yeah. judges got to decide who won the entire, the more of the fight, you know? Right. Um, 
the first season was who won the first round. I, I, I didn't like that. Like they asked, they gave, they asked us about that. They wanted our input, and I was like, I don't like it. Yeah, no, I think no, it's no. stupid. Because then you win the first round, and then you can just fucking bicycle it for the rest of it. But I um, do love the PFL. I think you do a great job, and I feel so bad because they put you to school. You had to go learn, like the the uh, computers there. Like, the you know, yeah. That train for that, like, because you know how, like, when you watch it. He's like drawing on the monitor and they like circle where he could have done and blah, blah, blah. That's like a, that's like a whole new revolution. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Like, he had to go back to school for that. Like, a, that was uh, crazy. And I, I, took some, I took some classes with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a producer. Like that, a, he was like, "Twas nothing. By the way, I always that <laughs> <laughs> you're a grandfather. Uh, how, so your daughter, yeah. has, how old is your daughter? Hey, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. She's 26. She's tw- I can't give a 26 year old daughter. That's incredible. Yeah, I was 17 when she was born. So, um, yeah, no, she's she's awesome, and my granddaughter's awesome. Did you like her husband? That's cool, man. That's you cool. Like her husband? Yeah, he loves my daughter. So, like, can't ask for more than that, you know? Like, for real, for real. So, I, 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 I wish really like him. Cool having What's you. That? I wish you were my grandfather. That'd be awesome. Be right. Like, Go over fights all the time, dude. His his son <laughs> is like the coolest kid ever. His son is like when I met him, he was like eleven, going on like fifty. He was like the smartest kid ever. Like he's over there. He came to my house reading comic books and like doing science projects, like building volcanoes. And and even his son went to science camp together. And I thought that That's was awesome. The, the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So, your granddaughter's gonna be on the playground like. <laughs> Fuck my dad, dude. My grandpa's gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> my grandpa's gonna whoop your dad's ass. <laughs> my grandfather banged your grandmother. <laughs> and your mother. <laughs> so it's possible. Um, I'll still beat their ass. How how old's your kid now, your son? Sixteen. How's he doing in school? He's pretty smart, man. He's a lot smarter than I was. Yeah, but so is everybody else. I mean, is he getting mostly A's? So that's all you can hope for, right? That's all you want to hope for, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's a good kid, man. He's on top of all of his stuff. Um, his mom keeps him in line, so he's um yeah. Is he training? You have him training? No, no. no not nothing at all. I have a question for you, Eves. So so your kids, as far as like athletics and sports and extra extracurricular activities, are you the kind of father that's like, you know what, I want you to do this, this, and I want you busy, or are you the kind of father that's you know what? Do what you want to do. As long as you're not a fucking shithead running the streets like a Lasky kid, you're a good kid, do your thing. Are you that kind of dad? Or are you like, yeah, I, want, I'm I like, want you busy, I want you doing shit? I don't want you to do what I want you to do. I want you to do what you want to do. You know? um, even when it comes down to video games or something like that, I do, I do want you to spread, spread your wings a little bit more and not just focus, like, not just wake up in the morning on a day you don't have anything to do, start playing video games and end up doing that all day, not even eating and going to sleep off of video games. Yeah, but, um, wasting your day. Yeah, no. Yeah, like, yeah, like, dude, you could do that and do some other things. We responsible, then I and then I full blown fuck off. Come on, read, son. Read comic books if you want. <laughs> you know, read something, do something else. But like, I'm just like, do what you want to do. You don't have to do. Like, your life is yours. It's not mine. Right. Yeah. But I think That's at a certain way. like, or do you think at some point as the as the parent, there are things that you need to step in and suggest like. Cause you know, it's going to be either good for their future or they don't know any better like things to decide yeah. on to take their time. Yeah. So you're like, why don't you try this, 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 and this out of those, see what you like. And we'll do, you know? Yeah. There's, there's, for me, there's a couple different things. Um, one is there are some things that you, I believe that you should know. You have to know um, some things as a male, some things as a female, some things just as a human being. Right. Um, right. And then there are, I also feel like as a child, you need to be exposed to a whole lot and see what you like and what you gravitate towards. Because as you get older and you become more things, you have more responsibility. You're not going to have time to do everything that is that you like to do. Um, so, or, or yeah. that's fun or that you're good at. So you kind of have to focus on some of the things. And then the last thing I think about being a parent is like, you have one job as a parent and there's really just one job. And that's to make sure that once your kid is out on the world on their own, they're capable of, do and doing and dealing with the world you know um so i think a lot of parents don't <laughs> understand that especially now how's what how's your mom doing 
My mom's good, man. She's all right. She's um she's cancer free, and um, nice. yeah. So I remember we had a we did a, a a GoFundMe for your mom, and he's yeah. like, I thought it was a joke because her mom's like, his mom's like a fitness model. She's like a cover of Maxim, like <laughs> gorgeous mom. And I was like, like, but yes, yeah, so I'm happy she's doing better, man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, my mom's doing all right. Like I like my mom. So my mom, my mom is super cool, right? I remember um, as a kid. <clears throat> I, she went, we went to this place. Trevor Burbick was a, was a boxing champion. He was the dude yeah. that Mike Tyson won one of his titles from, right? Um, I think his first one. So anyway, he was fighting in the Bahamas. And I didn't know my mom was friends with him. I didn't know who he was at the time. I know this, knew this now. But she, she took me to one of his workouts. And he's working out. And um, afterwards, I meet him. I'm probably like seven or eight years old. The first thing I do is just run up to him and give him a hug. I don't even know who the guy is. I just know he's a boxer, right? Um, <laughs> there's another time as a little I kid. I love you. As a little kid, um, Grace, jo Grace Jones was in, in the Bahamas. She was recording an album. And um, her and my mom were friends. I didn't know this. I, I mean, <laughs> her and my mom were friends. So we got there. And Dolph Lundgren was with her. And I'm like four years old, sitting in his lap, playing Connect Four with Dolph Lundgren. Right? Oh, my God. Um, and he's, he's this huge dude with all these muscles. No big deal. I didn't, yeah, right? I didn't know. So, like, I just found this out recently. Like, my mom and Bob Marley were friends. Like, <laughs> like. What the fuck? Dolph Lundgren Wait. hosted the MMA awards, and I had to like teach him all. He, first, he was like, comes in, he's like, I got my own jokes. They had nothing to do with MMA. <laughs> uh, but then I had to kind of rewrite the whole thing. Dolph, for him. Dolph. He, he was awesome. Like he was such a nice guy. He's like a, a brilliant guy. But I had to go pick up my wife and kid from the airport, like right before the award started. And then I got a text. They're like, Dolph needs you. <laughs> he, he like he's nervous or something. Where are you? And I'm like, the man's crumbling. <laughs> I never thought that I would have like Dolph Lundgren, like Ivan Drago need me for anything. It, like, <laughs> you should have been like, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! One of the jokes I wrote for him was like, he goes, I, he goes, doesn't matter how bad this goes, because my ex-wife left me for Flavor Flav, and that joke just fucking murdered, you know? Oh, oh fuck! Did he use it too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loved it. He thought that was a. He's like, you know, like he was super funny. Yeah. Is he like oh. a super giant guy? Super giant guy. He's also like a like a nuclear physicist or something. Or some kind yeah, of he's like very intelligent, smart. super giant. Smart. And he, he, he's good at Connect Four. He beat me. Fighting. Connect Four. Uh, Igor. And you were cheated. <laughs> no one beats me at Connect Four. You were four when you were four. I was cool. Yeah, he was. Well, the fuck, he used physics on me. We became <laughs> friends. He actually hired me again to like write. Like, I got, I got an email from him to like write something else for him. Like, Hell like, yeah. Do you just like listen to the That's Rocky dope. soundtrack and write jokes for him, like the training montage? Do, 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 do. You know what I miss, Adam? I miss your uh, text from the night before that you used to. Do. I, you know, I, I, th I thought about doing that again because they, they they hired you should. me. You you should. Deal, but they they watered. They I, I offended too many people, so they took out like eighty percent of it. But I'm like, I, I really do that I, shit on your own. Yeah, do, do it, it on your own. own. Yeah, fuck oh, them, dude. No, it's like then I gotta pay someone to like put it in text form. So unless I go out and get somebody to like sponsor it, it's just not worth it, you know? Green, so Green doesn't know how to do that? What do you mean? You could just Green. do it on your own phone. You could do it on your own phone. Yeah. No, it's, it's harder than you think. Uh, no, it's really not. What? To, to do a group? No, here's what you do. Yeah, you just have to, you you do. Just, the hard part is setting it all up. And then once you set it up, you're good. Yeah. Or you could even, you could even text, just send, just send already the prescriptive shit to us and just send it, tell us to send it back to you and Dude, put our we'll names just, in your yeah, phone. We'll yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you, change, change our names in your right. phone. We that's, can all like be, it'll be, you know, four fighters at a time. I just don't want to be ally at Quinta because I can't live in fear like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Donald Cerrone <laughs> Pettis is on the undercard of this. Uh, who wins this one? Yeah, I, I I think Cerrone wins. I think he's he got, I think he got humiliated the last fight. I think he comes back with a vengeance. There's something to that, man. Um, <clears throat> so here's the thing: when a guy like Kyle, I don't know if it's the same for him as it was for me, but that that whole thing about <clears throat> Cowboy not getting in the cage and Donald getting in there, yeah, that um, I I feel like that resonated with me because. Like, that's the point where you can start to, like, lose confidence, you know? Not necessarily, yeah. like, and there's, yeah. there's something about being inside, inside the UFC, being at that level of fighting where confidence is key, man. Confidence is a big deal. And if you start to lose that, then it's, it's one of those things where it's, a, it's hit or miss. 
he may come into this fight with Pettis, and he may be he may be the guy who's like, man, this guy beat me before that body shot. I'm gonna pay him back. Or he might be like, man, this guy beat me with that body shot, and I can't let that happen again. I got to be real cautious. And then he's too cautious of that, and everything else starts to overwhelm him. So yeah. it's like. I don't that know. It's a cold world, man. You can't have that. You can't have any doubt like that at all. No. You can't have that. Uh, all right. So no one's picking anybody. Um, oh, I don't shit. even know if these fights are going to happen, dog. <laughs> they're happening, like, bro. It's in Florida. Anything goes. A, in- yeah, they're happening. Worst things have happened in Florida every day in the newspaper. <laughs> this is Meanwhile, Chicago's having like thousand person parties with strippers. And like, they're just like, fuck it. Uh, they don't care. I'd be in my house, dog. You'll be in your house. Uh, Alexi Olnick versus Verdum. Verdum. I take Olnick. I don't. I'm not a big Verdum fan, man. That I'm guy. A, uh, fuck. I don't know which Verdum's gonna show up though. Is it like the Verdum that wants to fight or the Verdum that, that just needs money? You know. Well, I I think Olenek will will take it to the ground, and I just think Verdum is better there still. <laughs> I still think he's better there. Olenek's good, but he's not so dominating of a grappler that like you can't counter him and and you know take that's going to be a heavyweight out. grappling match though like yeah that's what it's going to be, be a lot of ground and pound especially if Olenek's on top yeah right, so Carla Esparza versus the karate hottie I'm picking Esparza I got the crotch hotch dude I want Carla to win but I don't I think karate hottie might win that I one. think she just teeps her and push kicks her and kicks her legs and keeps Uriah her Hall and that's Andre. it you're a Hulvers who? Jacare. Jacare. Really? Yeah, Jacare. Yeah. I like Uriah, but like the, the the difference in their ground game is just too big, and the difference in their striking is so much smaller. Sam Alvey versus Ryan Spann. True. I like smiling Sam. Mm, I like smiling I like Sam, smiling too, Sam. He's a dog, too. I'm kind of leaning towards the other guy, if I could be honest. Yeah, the, the other guy's on a, on a tear. Bryce Mitchell versus Charles Rosa. I like Charles Rosa. He like came Charles. Hey, hey, Charles Rosa, bro. I like Charles, man. He's a tough little dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're a big old smile, shitty grin on fucking his face right now. <laughs> I got him all excited. Is that, is that double team hookers? What's going on? Why do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Secret out, motherfucker. I like Charles. Like he's, you know, he's just he just looks like I know his jujitsu is good. I know he's a professional fighter, but he doesn't have Plus that, that intimidating look, you know. Yeah. Um. And this is one day in practice. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to exactly. put too many people on blast, so I won't. I won't call anybody out exactly, but I will give you Charles' side of the story. But you know, after practice at ATT, we run the mats. You know, it's a big mat too. And um, one of the guys, one of the other fighters, he's trying to like become a leader. This is like right, Robbie just kind of left the gym, and there was a bunch of stuff happening. So this guy, he wants to be. You know, he's like, there's a void there, and he wants to take over this leadership role. She's like, everybody, get your hands up. Run hard. Yeah, yeah. And Rosa's like, I just worked hard. I'm not doing all that. So he's jogging and he tries to call him out on it. And he's like, he's like, hey, Charles, when I say this, you better and you better not. And Charles is like, bro, don't fucking talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude is bigger than Charles and everything else. And I'm just like, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling any names, man. Oh, God. It was Hector? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, gosh. Come on, let's go. That was still the best debate ever, by the way. The Hector Lombard. Oh, that was, what a wild guy. It kept oh, going man. on Instagram the next day. Really? Oh, Did it? Yeah. It kept going. We got to do part two. Get the get the next third of the questions out. It, it's crazy to me how, how like, Hector, re- like, he can reason in his mind that because, like, people can play basketball well, they make millions of dollars, racism is over. <laughs> Doesn't exist. I don't think racism will ever. You can do it. You can do it. I can do it. It's fine. That's it. I don't think, I think people will always be racist. Some people. Of I course, dude. I mean, at, at a certain level, it's it's just built in as human beings to like the other. I think people. Just oh, you play look play. different. You sound different. You do. Your culture is di- like. There's something that separates you. I think if people want to blame others for their problem, you know. Of course. Know. They go, what, what's different? And you know what I think it is? I think racism is a factor of, of a lack of interaction and knowledge in other races is what it is. Yes. That's exactly what racism is to me. It's, it's yes. a lack of interaction with other races and knowledge of the other races. Yeah. There's like people that... And that, it's, a uh, fear. it's a fear of that lack was of knowledge. The Sarah Silverman's show where she like, she went to this family and like 
Arkansas or something, they had never seen a Jew. <laughs> like what, they're like, what is, what is a Jew? And she's like, me. <laughs> yeah, a person who saves money and doesn't like to give it to other people. <laughs> people like, <laughs> oh, uh, whatever. Oh, fuck. Luke, man. Thank you for saying um, that. <laughs> Price is price is tough, but I don't know. I just feel like Luke is he's gonna have his time. Uh, the next the next night, uh, actually May thirteenth, uh, four days later, it's Anthony Smith versus Robert Teixeira. Oh, that's right. Uh, hopefully, Anthony- Rumble. Oh, oh, he's facing Robert Teixeira. I, I I think uh, Anthony Smith. Well, the, yeah. I, um, we'll see how people have been training and that's experience versus like I mean they both have experience really. Anthony yeah, Smith I mean, has a lot of fight. Got- 45 um, but that's age and experience versus youth and experience and i just think the youth and experience is going to pull that one off i, I just, love yeah. that i, I mean glover's looked good so, too his last fight he looked great but it's got broken into and some crazy shit went on i hope that doesn't affect his training and you know, yeah. mind or anything else you know um <laughs> actually someone, some, hey adam some, some of my chat right? some of my chat wants to know do you think sarah serverman would be good at jujitsu because she's yes. I would love to roll with Sarah Silverman. He said because she's Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> yeah, I my favorite. He spelled it J E W. My favorite movie scene ever: the opening of the Way of the Gun. Oh, oh. What is it? Say it again. Way of the Gun. The opening scene. Way of the Gun. I don't think I've seen that. Don't, don't, don't tell him. Let him watch it. Vince, watch that movie. The Way of the Gun. Yeah. It's the greatest. One of my top ten lines of all, like. You'll see. All right, okay, got it. none of us seen it. Well, we're gonna go watch it. All right, so uh, Ben Rothwell versus OSP. OSP's now a heavyweight. Uh, okay. Who is it? Who's fighting OSP? Ben Rothwell. Oh, he's still fighting? The Dark Jedi, dude. I think this is a good fight for OSP as a heavyweight because he's fighting a guy who's kind of on his way down. Um, I think OSP's gonna have a tough time when he gets to bigger heavyweights, guys like Nganu or something, if he stays up there. But this fight, I think, is winnable for, for OSP. Maybe. Eve? Yeah. He's, I think he's going to have to – this fight, he's going to have to last long and use a lot of athleticism. Um, I think Rothwell, if he tries to stand in front of Rothwell, he's going to get clipped. And um, there's no – I don't I don't think his ground sense. game is going to be on the level of, one. of Rothwell. I think OSP's biggest problem is he's, he's using, like, really, these really old textbooks. I really – I don't know if he's spread his wings, and but it's, like – I don't mean – I'm not trying to shit on his coaching, but I just feel like there's not a – He's not evolving? Yeah, he's not evolving, and, and I feel like, like, like he's coaching. There's honestly no shame in saying that, dude, because, like, 70. this is a sport that moves so fast. We all have to evolve, you know what I mean? And that's a, that's yeah. just the f- truth of it. Remember when Rothwell Pat Barnett be, like, titty fucking smush? Like, he just put yeah. his head in his tits and just went like that. Like, that was the craziest thing. I've dude, ever. I grapple with dudes that are, like, bigger than me, and they tried to suffocate me with their titties like that, bro. Really? Yeah. That's why I'm everywhere a geek. Big fuckers are probably trying to smother me like that with their titties. Adam, I um, <laughs> let's hear it. Let I, it realize this. I just realized this. This is something I, I did. I did this um, did like some. You know that six degrees of separation. Yes. Right. You can get to every UFC current UFC champion through to me through f- four or less clicks. Really? Yeah. Okay, so Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz is a champion right Very now. UFC oh, champion, bro. Oh, I mean, I am every, I am every fighter. But every I, I, know. I can get. I mean, probably. You could probably get to 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 most of the fighters. I don't know about six clicks. All right, so who? All right, so who beat who? To be who to beat who? Okay, you. hold on. I have. I actually did put this down, so I'll tell you right now. Oh my god! No, you can't. This is this is what he's been doing his quarantine days right here. Fucking see how many clicks it takes for you to get to him on the internet. (laughs) (laughs) Henry Cejudo beat Dustin Kimura, who fought George Roop, fought Mark Hominick, who I fought. So you pick Kimura, Roop, Hominick, then you get to me. That's four. All right, Stepe. Okay, there's one. Stepe. This is a hard one. You go (laughs) Anthony Johnson, uh, Nate, um, Rich Clemente to me. All right, wow. uh, Khabib. Khabib, that's easy. Um, Dustin, Yancey Medeiros, me. Uh, John Jones. John Jones, Chael Son, and Nate Marquardt, me. Wow. Damn, dude. Now, Bellator 2 or no? Do you fucking fought Nate Marquardt? Yeah. In 99. Dude, how fucking fat were you, bro? 
the one. No, he was little. Was he? We that's before he got on all the songs. Oh, he was Dude, little. That's right. Dukes, baby. I was thinking he was bigger and got little. He was tiny and got big. Who won? Who, who yeah. won? Nate won by heel hook. Wow. Now Bellator also Eve or no? I don't know. Maybe. That's a good question. Uh, probably, right? Probably. They don't have 35 or 45. I mean, they have 45. Well, uh, who's the 45 champ in Bellator? Probably Pitbull Brothers, right? Those guys? Yeah, but I, I got to look at their record. I don't remember all their opponents. But I'm sure they beat, like, uh, Mike Chandler, who beat Eddie Alvarez, who beat, you know, I'm sure that you're with Eddie Alvarez every time. Yeah. Um, some of those, That's pretty funny that you did that. <laughs> uh, and then Ryan Bader. I'm sure you got some of Ryan Bader. Beat somebody. Yeah, I, I, like, I can get the Fedor, you know. Oh, then if, if you got Bader, beat <laughs> fucking I can get the Fedor. Fedor beat you fucking kill me. Yeah. Fedor beat Fedor, you know. Um, so wow, that's crazy. So six, six clicks or less. I bet you can get to anybody in MMA from me. No, wasn't the rule? Like probably. That might be different with fighting. The women too, or no? <laughs> no. The women too. Oh, but it, but Have you fought Fox. But, but hey, Adam, this this is a tweet of mine from a long time ago. Remember when they used to say about sex, like when you have sex with someone, you've had sex with everybody they've had sex with. Yeah, that's if cool fighting was, if fighting was like that, I would have I would have had sex with everybody except wow. Ronda Rousey. Tyler, you had three amateur fights. Yes. And somehow you get Eve Edwards. To Eve? <laughs> no, no. I'm, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Tyler trained with me, who I trained with Eves. Uh, there you go. That's two clicks. That's, trainings. that's not even a click. Those are, those are like touches. Those are, those are better than clicks, aren't they? All right, what about Bob Sapp? Can you get the Bob Sapp? I can. I got to look at his record because I, I don't remember his opponents. But What about Crow Cop? Crow Bob Cop? Sure. lost to Bobby Lashley, who beat somebody, who lost to somebody. who. Yeah, that's probably there. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> what about hey, Joe Sun? Joe Sun? That would be fun. I'm, I'm, give me some, send me some of these names and I'll send, I'll, 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 I'll do it. What about Joe Riggs? Let's go old school. Oh, that's Let's easy. Joe Riggs. That, yeah, that's easy. Uh, what about Abe Lincoln? Uh, <laughs> Abe Lincoln used to wrestle in high school. He said, mostly he was like 400 no in wrestling in high school. I'm, I'm calling bullshit on that though. Abe uh, Lincoln? Yeah. Lincoln was supposed to be a great, you know, you know who else is an amazing wrestler? Wrestled for Harvard uh, was the astrophysicist. The black, oh yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, yeah. yeah, he was like undefeated in wrestling in in college at Harvard or something. Uh -uh. Yeah, That's crazy. He was captain yeah. of the team, I think, or in high school maybe. I know. You know, you know, you know what's sad that I'm I'm like man, he really man. If that guy applied himself, he could have went somewhere in wrestling. Not even his Afro astrophysicist. Like I'm like mad that he like blew it as a wrestler, but Fuck not an astrophysicist. Yeah, physicist yeah. right. dude could have been. All right. Uh, okay, Eve, this is a good one for you. Uh, Felipe Linz versus Arlovsky. Felipe Linz versus Arlovsky. Whew. Man, Arlovsky, I've, a young Arlovsky destroys Felipe Linz, if you ask me. Um, but you know, now... He destroys everybody. Yeah, right? I, th I think Felipe Linz may win that. Felipe Linz got signed to the UFC. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, Arlovsky's like a lot more powerful now, but he's a lot slower than he was, too. Yes. For sure. All right, so May 16th. You let that dad bug just go. So May 16th, we got five more minutes. Walt Harris versus Overeem. I'm hoping Walt Harris wins just because of all the shit that went down. And oh, God, yeah. Guy and, oh, God. Wait, what shit? Wait, what? His daughter. Oh, his daughter. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were talking about something else. His daughter was missing and murdered. And yeah, I know. I thought you were talking about something okay, else. Okay, Adam, Adam. Here's yeah. your answer to Bob Sapp. Bob Sapp. <laughs> I was just checking it out right now. Eve's so, fucked everybody. Bob Sapp to um to Sokaju to Leo <laughs> to Chael Sonnen to Nate Marco. <laughs> Sokaju came to my show last night, by the way. He was on my online show. Dude. It was 25 people on my Zoom show, and Sokaju was one of them. And I was giving him a hard time because it was like this old white guy and some hot blondes. And I'm like, he's the guy. And it was his wife. And I'm like, oh, I'm a, he's the guy that. And May plus so no PED equals dad bod. Like, I was fucking, so was you was awesome. I was like, dude, you were the best fighter in the world until they found out you couldn't wrestle. And he was, he was dying. <laughs> like, um, he actually tipped me at the end. He's like, he hit me up. He's like, what's your uh, Venmo? I want to give you some money. Like, nice. so, good dude. Hi, um, man. All right. Okay. How about this? CM Punk. Okay. 
Um, that's not hard because there's Mickey Gall. Yeah. Um, Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then, like, that's like you have a close one with Diego. Fuck. All right. Uh, you probably just have like a one-off. Yeah, you Diego. Diego. Yeah. All right. What about um, what's his name? Uh, uh, the wrestler. Uh, that um, uh, Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson. Kevin yes. Jackson. Random or Jackson. Uh, Two-time gold medalist, Olympian. But I think he lost to Ken Shamrock in like 18 seconds or something. That's right. Yeah, I can. I, I'm sure I can get the Kevin Jackson. Oh um, <laughs> Frank Shamrock, actually. Kevin Jackson, Frank Shamrock, Nick Diaz, KJ Noons, me. Oh my God! Fuck. Uh, Tank Abbott. There's a name I haven't heard for it. <sighs> Tank KJ Abbott, Nunes. Vitor Belford. Um, shoot, I have to look at Vitor's. I'm sure I can get the Vitor. Dude, Vitor's a bigger dude than I thought he was, too. Kelvin Gastelum, somebody to you, I'm sure. Uh, Kelvin Gastelum, Nate Marquardt, me. Um, (laughs) Gastelum fought Nate Marquardt? Didn't he? I don't think he fought Nate Marquardt, but he beat, I'm sure he fought somebody that fought you, though. I'm sure. Uh, Jacare to somebody to you. Um, Mayhem Miller, obviously Robbie Lawler, right? Somebody to you. Uh, okay. There's got to be a, all right. John Dodson. John Dodson. I got to look it up because I, I can't think of all of his opponents, but I'm sure, I'm sure I can get there. John Dodson, TJ Dillashaw. Uh, Shane Carwin. TJ <laughs> Dillashaw. The Hudo. If you got this, Cejudo. Yeah, Gaslam did fight Mark Hort. Oh, wow. All right. Um, oh, what about this? Well, Vince Pichelle. I'm sure we fought. Like, that's easy. How? Because we we're in the same weight class around the same time. Yeah, you would think it'd be sim- easy. Uh, somebody to you, probably. I'm sure it's somebody. Uh, you just have to find somebody with a common opponent, like a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, if you get, if, if like you get to Fedor, what about Fedor's brother, the, the rapist? Uh, oh my God. <laughs> didn't he go to jail for rape? Am I, am I, am I, am I wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They crim- I don't know. They punish people for that in Russia. Hey, so, so check this out. I um, I, I found this thing. I, I want to post it, but also like I have a lot of respect for Jeremy Stevens, so I don't want to shit on him. But um, he got arrested the night before we fought. Then we actually fought. Um, Hermes Franca went to prison for for rape. Um, the first guy in the UFC I knocked out. Um, I forget his name. Jal Perini. He went to prison for rape. And then there's this other guy named Cedric Marks. Who um, who's who went to prison, re- went to jail for murder, escaped. He was running away and he was found hiding in, in a, like a truck stop or something. Um, oh, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I, fought, I fought that guy, and I'm undefeated against all these criminals. Wow, look at you. Yeah. More rapists. Good than- thing too. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeremy, well, Jeremy Stevens, that like it wasn't his. Like he got arrested, but he, you know, he he didn't get. He wasn't convicted of anything. They wow. dropped those charges because it was BS. Kale, uh, uh, Kale Sanderson. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who, uh, uh, who didn't they arrest him? They arrested him like before a fight, right? I need to pull out of it. The guy who, uh, the smashing machine, not smashing machine. The guy who, uh, the guy who died, who got shot for uh, the wrestling movie that came out, Foxcatcher. Oh, um, is that Gable? No, no. No, 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 no. The guy fought Gary Goodrich. The fox catcher guy, um, Mark Schultz. Schultz, yeah. Mark Schultz. But you said he fought Gary Goodrich, so I could go yeah, through yeah, Goodrich yeah. and get there. You know. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Damn, you fought everybody in MMA somehow. That's amazing. Wow, Angela Hill. Um, <laughs> all right, well that's amazing. Damn, babe. So, so Vince, a lot of people are on Twitch and uh, they want to follow you. Where can they follow you? Uh. Twitch.tv slash from help Michelle. I'm actually streaming this right now too. How many how many people you have watching you right now? Uh well, let me see. You think twelve? <laughs> I'd my... say uh, I don't know what your normal number six hundred. <laughs> no, I don't have that many. Usually I got like two hundred twenty. But people people just watch you play video games all day? That's the that's the thing? Fifteen. Fifteen in here. Wow, that's wow. Hmm. They're they're actually asking me some questions that I asked you guys. Some of the questions I asked you guys were questions from them. Nice. Oh, thanks, guys. 
Well, Tyler, uh, people want to, you know, train with you or they want to follow you. How can they follow you? Smithero BJJ on Instagram. I have a Twitter. I don't never use it. That's what it is, Smithero. I never knew how to say that. Smithero, <laughs> yeah, Smithero. My buddy gave me the the <laughs> name in high school because I would always answer questions that were the right answers, but I didn't get called on. Oh my god! I like, never knew. I never knew how to say your Instagram name. I was just like Smithero. Smithero. Sober. I think I've seen you. <laughs> The what? The most non-high I've seen you in months. What, will he be? Me? Yes. Really? What? It's time to smoke a bowl, then. He's, he's always, like, you're always blazed. Long live Olympics. Why, I I'm mean, still right now, it, but you can't tell I'm high, huh? Because I'm always high. It is a problem, but I'm, I'm not doing, doing fucking doing anything. So, like, get high, read, go shoot the bow. I can tell when Eves is no, high. Have a good, just have a good time. I'm trying to find... Um, He's Alexander. still looking up the wreck. All right. I'm looking up <laughs> Alexander and Melianenko because that's a challenge. He's trying to link himself to this guy. <laughs> Don't do it, Eves. It's not worth it, man. Um, <laughs> Alex beat Bob Sapp. So if you have Bob Sapp, then you you're there. Oh, you know what I was going to show you? Uh, what's a Josh Rosenthal? Josh. Was Rosenthal? he the ref? The, yeah, the ref, ref, that, ref. Uh, Like yeah. the drug trafficker? Or yeah. It was something okay. like that, right? Oh, yeah, what, about, so was, right, what about her? I was going to show you guys the picture of him getting arrested because the picture they used in the news of him getting arrested was him raising my hand on the Ultimate Fighter when they were like <laughs> discussing all his charges and shit. Like yeah, the, first, this guy. the photo that they used of him was him holding my hand up. For the Ultimate oh my Fighter. God. What about Herb Dean? I don't know if Herb has enough fights. I don't, I don't, I don't really count Herb like high level, you know, high level. Didn't he fight? Like, he's a ref. In Herb Dean fought though, because... didn't he? Herb did fight. I probably could get to him, but I don't know. Well, it depends on who, like, you what know. What about Jose Canseco? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Canseco. You're Herb, fucking stupid. Herb, Canseco, <laughs> he put a guy in, I think, Pride or Ryzen. He, he, he brought a baseball bat with him. It was, it was and wasn't it a strike for He put Hung Man Choi. Uh, and oh, he was, that's right. I'll hang your Choi. And he was wearing, like, tights with him. He wore this tights. Is, hold on, hold on. Herb Dean fought Joe Riggs, so like this is the photo they used. All right, right. this is the photo they used when they convicted Josh Rosen. Joe Riggs. Yep. Wow. Who won? Joe Riggs, right? Can't see it. Yeah. You have to look on my stream to see it. I'm showing my stream. Uh, All right. So hung. Okay. Herb Dean, Joe Riggs, Shoni Carter, Matt Sarah, me. That's five clicks. Wow. 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 What about uh? Actually, can I mess with the video and make it to where you see my desktop instead? I think you can do a share. Let me look. Share screen. I don't know. I gotta look. Hungman Choi, didn't he fight Brock Lesnar? Um, or he fought somebody. He only has one, yeah, one fight, Hungman Choi. <laughs> I told you. you know that? I told you. It's about who did Hungman Choi fight. That's, I think he fought a couple guys. I think he beat Bob Sapp. If you beat Bob Sapp, then you're good. He fought Fedor, okay. Prokop, Canseco. I can, get, I can get there, but I don't know if I can get there in six clicks. Oh, my God. You could have a virtual background. Oh, you guys are going to get a kick out of this right now that I'm yeah, about to do. Yeah, we got the processing. I'm, I can't do it, my stupid computer. You guys, you guys are about to shit yourself when you see this. That's crazy that you can get to Jose Canseco. I can get to Jose Canseco in less than five clicks. <laughs> <laughs> You're my hero, Eve. you fucking piece of shit. Oh, my God. Oh, what does it put oh, me in there? Can I put me in there? Look at that. You're in there. Jose Canseco to Hungman oh, Choi. Try to put me inside the TV. Oh, by the way, Tyler. Hey, to yeah. Shane Sonnen. Uh, and Mark I, I, I to me. almost killed my dog two days ago. I had to go to the vet. Oh, no. What did he do? He jumped my dog. Both cats. Like, fucking. Uh, my oh, dog. I thought you said. No, my dog. I said my dad almost killed my dog. My dog is blind. And he the cats? All the time, and they both jumped him at the same time and, and clawed his eye out. Close eye. Long neighborhood, bitch. So I, had, no. I, I had to go to the vet. Oh, Miles. Yeah, poor guy. Miles is a dick. He probably deserved it, but. Oh, there you go. Like, come on. I know, poor dog. It doesn't work that good. I can't believe that you got every single. I can't believe you get the. You can get the Jose Canseco. That's amazing. That, That's pretty funny. You get the Jose Canseco. Oh, what about that other guy? That 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 football player that got knocked out in one round in uh, I think Affliction. It was the outside one. Uh, he, and then he, he tested positive. He was like, wait, wait, can you get to Bobby, Bobby Lashley? Oh yeah. He was like 80 times the, uh, the, the TRT level. <laughs> if you get the Bobby Lashley, fuck yourself. <laughs> he, 
who's that football player? His name is Chris something. It was in that L.A. Affliction show or L.A. Strike. I know you're talking about, but I don't remember the guy's name. The guy had, like, I don't dreads. know. I'm not gonna have dreads. The guy's like a comedian who like lives with his mom, and he knocked out this uh, this fighter, this football player, who then tested positive for all kinds of shit. Um, Damn, I don't remember this. Bobby Lashley's MMA record is not on his Wikipedia. I gotta look him up on Sure Dog. What the hell? Oh my god! I just I just realized on Getty Images this picture. Parker. This picture of like Josh, let's say if I want to buy this photo of Josh Rosenthal holding my arm up on Getty, it's a small one is one hundred and seventy five dollars. That's crazy. Dude. A medium is three seventy five, and a large is four ninety nine. Probably going towards his like bail money. Um, I guess. So, Eve, uh, Mark Kerr, Smashing Machine. Yeah, but I gotta figure like that that era easily because of Pride and. Well, he and- lost to uh, what's his name. Um, he lost to the Mo King Mo. So you, I'm sure you got the Mo. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Wow, you got the, the hard parts. Of the guys is like one or two fights. Uh, those are the ones I wanna. Um, uh, what about the, what about the what's his name the um, the guy who's the announcer that breaks every Robin Black. Ooh, I don't. I when I when I when I so. I will try that one out. I'd like to see. But when when we talk, when I say I can get to any fight, I'm talking about like, when I say fighters, I'm talking about like actual fighters. fighters. Like, (laughs) Like, I'm not trying to shit on Robin, but I'm just talking about high level guys, you know? Yeah. I'm sure sure he'd be the first one to say he's not real. What about Bam Bam Bigelow? Look up. (laughs) What about Luna? What about his babe Luna? No, Bam Bam Bigelow fought. I I fought on the same card as Bam Bam Bigelow. Really? Moosin. Did he fight on Moosin? He fought somebody that t- took like a, a fight. I think it was against he fought like Sakuraba. Somebody that he just, he just got murdered. In I feel like I've seen him fight in an MMA fight. He died. Uh, but yeah, Did Bab- he? Yeah. Did he get to Cabbage? Oh, yeah. If he got, t- if he got Tank Abbott, he gets to Cabbage. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's true. What about Bam- All right. All right, we're going to close the show with Bam Bam Bigelow. Can Eve right. get to Bam Bam Bigelow? He only had one fight against Chemo. Oh yeah. Are you fought chemo? You oh, that's that's good chances for you though against chemo. Who's yep. chemo fought? Oh He's, well, yeah. You might have fought Sakuraba. <laughs> I remember chemo's crazy ass eyes. Remember his eyes? Yup. Dude, that's how I remember that dude. I remember carrying the cross, dude. That's yeah, all I remember. Was, dude, that dude chemo was always so tense. I met him in real life too, and he was like, he was actually a cool dude when I met him. But he was like, oh yeah, dude. You look at him, he was always so like that dude just smoked a fat bowl of crystal meth, bro. <laughs> James Tony, I can definitely get to, to get to Bam Bam Bigelow through um, Hoist Gracie, because he fought Chemo and then Hoist Gracie, and yeah. then probably three or four clicks from Hoist Gracie. And James Tony to Randy Couture. <laughs> oh. James Tony, Randy Couture. Yeah, Tito. Vito Belfort. Yeah. Yeah. Vito, yeah. Oh, then it trails down to Marquardt. Fucking Marquardt's your key right there, dude. Yeah, really. <laughs> Marco did all your work for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Marco did all the sauce for me. He did. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was my that was my tweet for the Marco and Vitor fight. I was like, Vitor just won all the steroids. <laughs> Steroid. Can you get to Juni Browning? Juni, sure. Um, <laughs> probably Juni, Cole Miller, and I'm sure Cole and I share some similar opponents. Damn, what happened to Cole Miller, man? He's still, he's he's still running around, man. Right? He's running his gym in Georgia. Did yeah, he but he was like, actually? yeah, he retired. Yeah, I but he came back and he's he came back and he's on a tear. He was like fucking people up. I remember because I fought on one of the cards with him, and then uh, mm-hmm. he lost the fight, and then he kind of and then he just disappeared. I think we went to a uh, strip club together, me and Cole in uh, Florida. Went to a uh, strip club, me me and Cole, and then oh, yeah, and then and there's a you know, that guy did you make it out though. Matt Van Buren. the guy, guy, Matt something, the big, tall, goofy guy. <laughs> Cole and I were in Pittsburgh one night, and this dude is walking by. These two, two girls were walking in front of him. They were attractive. And I looked at them, I saw the girls, and I saw the dude behind them, and I was like, nice, man. But he thought, I, I guess he thought I was saying something else. So he's like, he was trying to be tough. And he's like, what, bitch? And he starts walking away. He's talking about, I got a gun. And I'm like, bitch, if you had a gun, you wouldn't be walking away. And Cole is with me. And Cole, Cole pulls out his camera. <laughs> he wants to film it. Like, I knew like, he had my yes. back. At the same time, he's like, and I was trying to film that shit because that dude was good. 
he came back, he's going to get fucked up. Yeah, well, Cole carries a gun, too. Fucking, he, like, showed it to me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, legally. But uh, Cole's, I mean, a, yeah, Cole's a fucking gangster. Anyway, listen, uh, I want to out Cole. But anyway, listen, uh, thank you guys for coming, watching our show. Uh, see you guys next week. Eve, thank you. Uh, I love this new drinking game. Uh, this is awesome. Vince, you're the best. We're, we're uh, playing a drinking game? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking the six degrees of fucking Eve. Ooh, six degrees of Eve Edwards. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, y'all. Be good. Be good. Better, guys. guys. See you, boys. Yeah.